What is going on, my friends? Marlon Gibbons here. I hope everyone is doing well. Um, I really tried to stay away from doing a video about the, we'll just say global challenges that we're all facing, um, unless I had something of real value to offer you. I didn't want to just simply leverage the, the, the news, the headlines, you know. So stick around. So I kind of have only one guideline for this video, and that is I want it to be positive, hopeful, optimistic, um, just uh, maybe even inspiring. And that's not because there's any shortage of pessimism out there. And any of you that have followed this channel for a while know that that's just simply not my MO. I want to help you and encourage you. And, uh, and as much as what I'm going to share is my opinion, I've also reached out and spoken to uh, other library owners that are friends and publishers that, that have a different perspective. They're on the other side of the fence. They're the partners we're working with and supplying music to who are in direct connection with the industry, with the TV shows and the programs and the music supervisors. And I've done some homework as well and you know, just to kind of help support what my thoughts are. So most of us know that the industry has shut down, the industry being music production, library music, and um, the shows, the programming that we supply our music to. When I say we, I mean us as producers, composers, songwriters, in partnership with music libraries and publishers, pitch the music to the various TV shows and programs and networks. Well, those networks and shows have, have shut down. The machine we feed just stopped. Um, and as per regulations, the sets have shut down. They can't have a bunch of people. You think about all the people involved, the team involved in producing a show and everybody having to be on set. Well, that's all changed. But as I said a couple seconds ago, I want to offer some ideas and maybe some hope in how we can position ourselves to be better off than if we had, than if we just stopped and stared and did nothing. So consider this, if in two or three months time, things are 100% full motion forward as far as the industry goes and as far as libraries um, you know being as they were let's say last November October and everything is just moving forward are you going to be ready for that um, have you been writing during all this this time uh, it's obviously very easy to get distracted and look at the news and everything going on but have you still been writing because that is going to help you. I, I can't even describe how much value there is in building your catalog right now while you have the time to do it. More importantly, my point is because the industry has stopped, that doesn't mean you should stop as well. Now is the perfect time for you to build that catalog. So any of my regular subs will know I'm repeating myself here. I've said this in a million videos. If you approach a music library, whether it's your first time or it's somebody you've been working with for a while, and you approach them with an entire album worth of tracks, they're gonna dig that much more than if you approach them with one track. They're gonna find more value in that entire album, and that right there gives you an edge. Another thing to consider is, is this, and you can use this as leverage. Um, a lot of the libraries, at least the ones I've spoken to, are absolutely inundated. They're slammed with submissions, way more than, than typical. Um, they have to QC those things, they have, to, they have a ton of administrative, maybe they do the metadata themselves. It's just a lot of work when a submission comes in, um, whether it's accepted or not. They just, they're absolutely slammed right now. That gives you an opportunity to take some of this time and as I said, maybe produce an album and make it right and, and just go that extra mile with it. Um, and when you do have the opportunity to get through the, the front doors or, or pitch to an, uh, a library, you have, you have a bit more of an edge. You have something bigger and better. You have a bigger product, a more valuable product. And with so many people entering into this industry every day, you really want to try and work those angles and, and create value in the work that you're doing, not just simply deliver the same thing as everybody else. But to give you some ideas as far as, you know, describing what I'm talking about, um, you know, there's Christmas coming up, you pull out your sleigh bells, juice up your tracks that way. Um, elections, uh, only three or four months away, that's kind of a crunch time, but just something to consider. Think about all the TV programs, the news programs, the um, documentaries, 
everything and anything, all the programming that is going to cover this. This is going to be around for a long time. Think about all the music that's that's going to be needed that is relevant to what we're going through right now. So kind of a you know, dark, eerie, investigative, um, you know, drone type stuff. I mean, and I'm sure there'll be music needed from across the board. You know, pop, rock, punk, hip hop, electronic, it, it's not going anywhere, orchestral, and that stuff is going to always be needed and used. But what I'm proposing is that you have a bit of a strategy for the tracks you're going to be submitting um, in, in hopes to getting them placed and to consider what is going to be needed or trying, I guess, hedge that or get ahead of the game is, is what's really gonna help you out in the long run. And I guess I'll close with what I think is the most valuable piece of information that, that I can give. Um, is that consider this like we we talked about the, the machine that we feed in the beginnings is the, the libraries that we provide music to and hopefully they get the music placed and all that great stuff well the industry stopped for them as well that machine that so-called machine that I'm, I'm referring to it, it's you, you're in a partnership with these these music libraries and you're working together uh, they're trying to place your tracks and when all of that stops, when production stops and these shows stop, it stops for them too. And these libraries want to do well by you, they, they, the good ones anyway, they, they do care about their, their contributors. So consider that they're in the same boat as you, even though you're kind of, you have different, you're wearing different hats, it stops for them too. So, so what I'm suggesting is that when you do approach them, do so with a sense of of partnership and in, in how you're going to help your partner, how you guys are going to come out of this together. Not, hey, what can you do for me? Again, I say that a lot. I know I'm repeating myself, but it's worth repeating. You partner with these these music libraries and you help them and they help you. So don't go to them, you know, feeling entitled or that they need to help you. They're going through everything we are going through as well. So maybe the better way to go about this is if there's a library that you're already affiliated with and work with, find out find out what they need if you can help them. And if you're submitting for the first time or you're soliciting to any of these libraries, then a lot of them will say on their websites whether they're closed for submissions, respect that. Whether they're um, you know closed temporarily, uh, whether they're open to submissions but maybe are asking for your patience as they get through a backlog. In any case, really take heed to whatever it is that they're um, explaining to you. Essentially, just good business. Respect whatever they're asking. And, and hopefully when you do have that opportunity, you've you know put a bit of strategy into your game and you have a great album that you think will be really relevant, um, or you've been watching and listening to what that library has going on, the type of tracks that they're placing, the shows that, that before all this they were working with or they get lots of placements in. Um, again, with the whole research the library you're going to uh, reach out to. But mostly I just want to emphasize that don't approach a library in the hopes that they can do something for you. Approach a library with the sense that you're bringing value to them and hopefully entering into a partnership and you're helping each other. That's just a good idea anytime going forward and, and prior to all this stuff we're going through. And I guess I'll close by, I guess, reiterating how important it is to keep moving forward, keep writing, keep producing, keep building your own catalog. Don't get caught up in, you know, rubberneck and looking at the accident as you drive by. Look forward and look at your goals and have a plan. Don't stop. My advice is to put your head down and just keep writing, keep coming up with plans and strategies and ways to keep moving forward in, uh, in this industry. I just genuinely feel optimistic about this industry and that we're gonna be okay. And I wanna see us all do great. Uh, I'm cheering you on, I really have your back and, um, and I appreciate all the support you've been showing me by subscribing to this channel and following me on the other social media and interacting with me. Um, I think we've built a great network here and uh, as I said, I. I I don't know how else to say it. I just, I really appreciate it. So thank you everybody. And uh, we'll catch you next week.